Well, hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. We are getting ready to go live. We are thanking the Lord for another roundtable disciple discussion where we are talking about the Holy Spirit. I'm going to drop this real quick because I got I got some stuff. I got to go visit individuals in the hospital, uh, an individual that is in the hospital. Let's put it that way. Um, and so I have to drop this real quick. I am I am hoping those that are already logged in, I hope you already have your pen, pen, piece of paper, because there are some things that we want to talk about. We are really, the, the power of the Holy Ghost is really pushing me um, in the direction of talking about the Holy Spirit. And this is why it's so important. Last week, we we, are, we was in the Holy Spirit, was talking about the Holy Spirit. I had the two guests on with me. And the week before, we also introduced talking about the Holy Spirit. Now, we remember I told you guys, we are, the Lord is pushing us into a series. And so in this series, we want to get familiar with the Holy Spirit. We want to be able to know who he is as a person, as the third person, because we do understand that it is that they're unified, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and they're moving in oneness. We don't want to uh, look at them as three parts, but reality is they are really one. It's, it's three in one. Let's put it that way. Three in one. So they're moving together, but we are really honing in, talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. Y'all, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. If you don't look here, if you have not gotten familiar with the Holy Spirit and you have the Holy Spirit, you're endowed with the Holy Spirit, you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, that becomes a problem because at the end of the day, this is where the Lord is saying, okay, I'm giving you, I'm giving you power. I'm giving you uh, what you desire to, for, what you yearn for. And now you don't know how to use the Holy Ghost. Y'all, it's like having a gun. And, and you don't know how to use the weapon in your arsenal. You, you're just carrying it around for show. And, and when it's time when action starts to go down, you don't know how to pull the trigger. You don't know how to operate it. Well, it's the same way with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is like this. He said, you got to know how to operate in me. You got to know how to activate me. Come on, you guys. You got to know how to activate the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't care what kind of situation you enter into, you better know that the power of the Holy Ghost is right there and ready to be used. But before we dig and really get in real deep, y'all, I got to go into a word of, of, of prayer and those that have questions, because I'm finding that when I get off line, individuals have questions. And, and if you have questions, I want you to make it a point, even if we, even if you had a question on, from last week, and, and and you didn't get to ask the question. Y'all put it up in live chat and we'll discuss and we'll go over it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now as we enter in, as we come before the throne of grace. Lord, we are asking right now that you move by your spirit in the name of Jesus. Have the right of way, almighty hand of Jehovah. We are looking for the power of the Holy Ghost to move in us in this hour like never before, that miracles can transition, that that healing power can move in hospital rooms, in the home in the name of Jesus, in the church house, mighty hand of Jehovah, that all the nine spiritual gifts that, that be moved in this earthly realm, Holy Spirit, empower us like never before. I speak that you raise your people up from the dead in the name of Jesus. Awaken them in this hour and letting them know that they have the power and they do not have to be afraid in this hour. That is faith over fear in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, as we dive into this word. We ask you to open up the understanding, give wisdom, give knowledge, and give what is needed to minister to your people. We thank you, Lord. And we pray the prayer of faith in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless every single one of you all that is logging in. 
I'm praying that everybody is well in their body. I'm praying that everybody is uh, being used in this hour and you're not being afraid to speak the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm praying as we always open up uh, that you are really truly discovering the real purpose, the real truth, and the real you. Uh, a lot of us is so falsified as so many of us in the church house is so falsified and we have not truly found our true identity, but the Lord is saying that you need to know who you are. A lot go on, uh, you know, certain things that I look at and, and you're scrolling on YouTube and you see certain things and and I see a whole lot of individuals. You, they, you know how they show one picture how individual look a mess and, and then they show the other picture with all this makeup on them and they look like a whole new person, my Jesus. This is where the Lord is telling us in this hour. He does not want us to be falsified. He does not, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about you wearing your makeup, okay? But understand this, there are so many individuals that's in the church that are hypocrites and, and, and one minute they this way and the next minute they're another way. One minute they act a certain way in the church, and, but they act something like totally different when they're at home. That's, that, that's falsifying your character. That's put, wearing a mask. And sometimes, you know, I, I look at individuals like, you know, at the end of the day, you should be tired Tired. You should be tired of, of walking around having to wear a mask for so many years. Come on, y'all. We got to move into our real identity and our real identity you will find in the power of the Holy Ghost. Y'all, this is the series of the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Uh, remember, y'all, we was talking. I hope I hope y'all really go and get the book that I was telling y'all. Fuchsia Pickett is the author of this book. It's called Presenting the Holy Spirit. It's so much information. A lot of this stuff uh, is very uh, knowledgeable and very um very uh, prominent for today's time because the Holy Spirit don't ever get old, y'all. It don't ever get old. So I want to talk about, before I go into uh, the results of communion with the Holy Spirit, there are seven, seven results uh, that you have to know that will come about if you move in the power of the Holy Spirit. But I'm not going to hit all seven. But before I go even in that route, I want you all to learn and know about the personal communion. Is there anybody having a personal communion with the Holy Spirit, having an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit? Like, you're, you're, you know, in your quiet time, are you praying and are you reading your word and then you go into a uh, uh, a portion of your prayer where you meditate, where you're not just constantly asking, asking the Lord to do this, asking, 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 and you're constantly asking and you're constantly asking, and then you're praying for other people and you're praying for other people and then you're asking, asking. No, there has to be a time where you sit and you meditate. Is there anybody doing that? Can I get a, can I get some hands? Can I get some hands? Is there anybody meditating on the power of the Holy Spirit. And I'm talking about after you have read your word, then you start to meditate on what you just read. Because then the Holy Spirit starts to reveal things to you. Is there anybody doing that? Y'all look at if you're not doing it, y'all need to start doing it. Because that's the only way that you are going to uh, uh, start to see and know the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, the intimacy, the intimacy, the personal communion, this is just a personal communion. Uh, I'm reading out of the book and, it's, and it talks about accepting the Holy Spirit as your divine person. And he, you're accepting him as the divine person. That's the first thing you have to accept him as a divine person and be acquainted. You got to be acquainted with him. So if I'm in trouble, I can call on him and I know that he is going to come to my rescue. Acquaint yourself with him. This is where they also, he's also talking about the intimate communion with the Holy Spirit as, as we give ourselves to prayer and fellowship. 
So when I pray, I'm fellowshipping with the Holy Ghost. I, I, this is where, this is your private closet. This is your, your intimacy when you go into your secret place. And nobody has to know about what you are praying. Hello, somebody. This is what I love about the, the secret place, the intimate place where I can go in my closet. I don't have to share with you. I don't have to say nothing to you. You don't have to know anything what I prayed, but me and the Holy Ghost has that connection. We are, we are in that private place and we are communing with each other. And this is where you're fellowshipping with him. The power of the Holy Spirit, uh, walking in the spirit. This is what happens when we walk in the spirit, y'all. Things start to cultivate in our life because that is his job. So when he tells us, when he tells us to pray in secret, as we pray in secret, he tells us in scripture that he will reward us openly. So if if I'm praying in, in oh, if I'm praying in secret, guess what? I'm looking for the Holy Spirit to do whatever needs to be done out in the open. So guess what? I don't have to tell you what I pray. Y'all, all y'all that like to run your mouth and, 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 and tell folks, the Bible says don't let your, your left hand know what your right hand is doing. You don't need to discuss everything with individuals. Come on, you guys. And I'm look, and so let, let me let me help y'all out. I know there are some times that we try to hide things, and y'all, I, I want y'all to get an understanding of what I'm saying. Sometimes we try to hide things. If you try to hide things and you don't get it right with the Lord, the Lord will expose you. But when I say sometimes we don't have to discuss certain things uh, with people talking about maybe you have a business idea maybe maybe the lord is saying that he's getting ready to transition you into another place y'all you don't have to discuss that with people now granted the lord may send a prophet on the scene and the prophet may say boom you know what i see the lord getting ready to transition you into another place well that's because the lord has shared that through the power of the holy ghost with that prophet or that prophetess or that pastor or evangelist or whatever the case may be and and he had to send them in because maybe you were kind of a little skeptical maybe maybe you were a little slow about doing things but know that I tell people a lot of times with business ideals and certain things that the Lord needs you to do, maybe it's a, uh, you got to write a book or whatever the case may be. Sometimes it's best not for you to say anything to nobody because the enemy has a tendency to intercept that word and try to sabotage, make things hard for you. So this is where I'm telling you now to be led by the spirit. Be led by the Spirit, okay? The, and, and the Holy Spirit will, in, in your communion, in your personal relationship, the Holy Spirit will tell you who to be around, who to connect to. Um, he will put people in your place who he needs you to be divinely connected. Everybody you can't connect to, y'all. But the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord, the leading of the Holy Spirit will put you where you need to be. Y'all, we cannot be around everybody. And, and, and reality is you shouldn't want to be around any, everybody. The Holy Spirit, when you lack communion with him, that's when you start to search and you start seeking and you start looking for answers all over the place. But I'm here to tell you, if you stay in the face of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will automatically, the Holy Spirit will automatically be your guide. No, he does not lie. He will teach you. He will guide you. He will direct you. Matter of fact, when you have been in a place and you have been complacent for a long time, the Holy Spirit will say, it's time to get up. It's just sometimes a lot of us is slow about moving in the Holy Spirit. Now, look, I have been there slow about moving. And when the Lord is telling me to do something, this is where the Lord is saying, I'm not telling you to do something just for your, your, your health. I'm telling you to do something because it's going to benefit not just you, but your whole family. This is why we have to commune with the Holy Spirit. There is so much going on in this hour that the Lord is calling us in this hour to be one with him. Is there anybody making that effort to become one with him? Anybody? 
Is there anybody out there uh, in, in on the live chat, those that are going to watch this globally, are you making that effort to become one with the Holy Spirit? I'm telling you this, I have learned over the years to become one with the Holy Spirit. There is stuff that individuals just cannot do, okay? And then I trust that the Holy Spirit will send whoever needs to be sent my way. Becoming one with him, the Lord is calling us to do in this hour. The Bible tells us over in John, y'all go to John. I want y'all to see something in John. The power, the power that exists in the power of the Holy Spirit. Go to John. And if you go to John chapter one, because Jesus showed us how to become one with the Holy Spirit. The scripture says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that, was been, that has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. Now, there's a lot of in the that there's a lot of stuff in just in that portion right there. Because I need you all to see the communion in that. Jesus made it a point to be as one with the Holy Spirit. But he's telling you, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was God. Now, watch this. We find that that Jesus was always in the beginning. Jesus was always there at the beginning of time. We opened up the series and we talked about how the Holy Spirit was there, how Jehovah was there, well, Elohim, because he's the creator, and which is all, which is, you know, God has different names, but Elohim means the creator. And then the Holy Spirit was there to move on things. The word was Jesus. And so now we find that John is talking about how he was and how he has always been since the beginning of time. And then he talks about how Jesus was there when when, when Jehovah spoke or Elohim spoke and things became alive because it says that through him, all things were made. So it's talking about through Jesus Christ, everything was made. So that means the Holy Spirit was moving with Jesus so that everything could be made. And then he goes on, he says, through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. So Jesus and the Holy Spirit and Jehovah had to create everything. So, so look at how the Holy Spirit was moving and sink, but through Christ through Christ Jesus. And he made it so that everything that, that, that is not, that was not or going wrong in the beginning, we find that there was a situation in the beginning of Genesis and the Holy Spirit had to come and recreate. If you know, if you get and you really study your word, you find that they had to recreate. So they were working together. I tell you this because this is what the Holy Spirit want to do with you. He want to work with you. He wants to work together with you. But you cannot work together with the Holy Spirit unless you know he is the divine person in you. And this is where the interview relationship comes. Do you guys know that the Holy Spirit will show you things before it even occur so that you can get in your closet and you can redirect the enemy? Come on, y'all. We are lacking in this hour. There is so much going on in the world. And if we don't connect with, with our divine person that lives inside of us, then my Jesus, we are cutting our own self short. Now, enough of that. Let's go into the results of the communion of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to even, I'm just going to tag two, y'all. I'm only tagging two and I'm getting ready to get up out of here. First thing first, the result of the communion with the Holy Spirit. First thing first, you'll have victory. You'll have victory. Now, the Holy Spirit is funny because I, I, I got to tell this because I know there's a the Holy Spirit has fallen at FT. 
and people are experiencing an Acts 2 experience. But can I give you all, can I help y'all? Because we got these young people that is really receiving the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But a lot of the young people don't know, if you don't stay around the fire and get to know the third person, uh, then you will realize that or the enemy, let's put it this way. I got I, let me let me help y'all out. Let, let, let's put it this way. The enemy will think, make you think that there is nothing to the Holy Spirit. Because you have not overcome anger, or you have not overcome abuse, or you have not overcome lying tongues or cursing just yet. Now watch this, you guys. Uh, and before I even go there. I can remember the time when I received the Holy Spirit and I really truly thought that once I received the Holy Spirit, everything was going to be peaches and cream. Everything was over and I was going to just fly, keep flying. But y'all, can I help y'all? The Holy Spirit is the individual, the person to help you through things, to help you overcome things, to help you get delivered and be set free. Once the Holy Spirit comes on the inside of you, his job, because it becomes, it's like this, we got to make him big in us. It's like making him big in us. So once you feed him, you know, you got to make him fat. You got to make him fat. You keep feeding him the word. You keep praying. You keep having that intimate relationship. Once you keep doing that, do you understand it starts to crowd out every demonic or unclean spirit in your life? Guess what? It's like this. It's like this, okay, I don't, I, I, I make him big and anger gets, it, it's too crowded in here. It's too crowded in here and anger got to go. I make him big and then lying tongues got to go. I make him big and then deception got to go. I make him big and then fornication got to go. I make him big and then lust got to go. Come on, somebody. I, I got to make him big in us because there's, my mom used to say, look, two women can't stay in the house together. Or two men can't stay up in the, in the house together. My dad would tell my my uh, brother. So so when you when you got when you have the king living on the inside of you, he ain't gonna live with peasants, demons, or peasants. Come on, y'all. You gotta stop feeding the peasants in you and feed the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. If you feed him, you'll always have victory. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it may seem. You will win. So I go to the book and the book says, hmm, fellowship with the Holy Spirit makes it possible for us to live our daily lives in a way that pleases God. Is there anybody that is truly looking to please the Lord? It's the Holy Spirit that makes it possible so that you can move in the direction that uh, you're walking circumspectively, you're, you're walking carefully, and, and you're allowing the Holy Spirit to, to move through you. And it's like this, okay, Holy Spirit, I, I, I start to talk to him. And I said, do I, do, I, do I say something to this individual? Do I respond to that individual when they respond to me in an angry way? Do I even say anything? And the Holy Spirit will say, yay or nay. Are we talking like that? Because I know I have learned to talk to the Holy Spirit in everything. Look, y'all, a lot of times I have to, as a matter of fact, uh, step back, assess the situation. When individuals are coming at me some kind of way, I mean, sometimes you got to step back, assess the situation, and then you allow the Holy Spirit to say, okay, move. And then if he tells you not to move, then you don't move. It's that simple. And a lot of people don't understand how the Holy Spirit may work in you. But at the end of the day, it's for you to be obedient. I can't help that you don't understand how the Holy Spirit moves inside of me. And you got to know when you have that relationship with him, he does not move in everybody the same way. That's what makes him so powerful. Gosh, come on, y'all. We cannot put the Holy Spirit in a box. And we have to stop saying, well, he does not work that way. Victory comes in different packages. 
Come on, somebody. Victory comes in different packages. Just like you get a gift, you don't know what kind of wrapping is going to be on it. You don't know what kind of bow is going to be up on it. But victory comes in different packages with different bows. The Lord is just telling you, look here. I will give you victory in any shape, form, or size. Ooh. Just know it's going to be victory. But I will never know if I don't put him in front of me, if I don't walk circumspectly, if I don't hear his voice and he tells me stop uh, or speak, move, quiet. Some of us are trying to have victory in our own way. And the Lord's saying, I don't want you to have victory in your own way. Matter of fact, stop trying to solve problems. Try to come up with your own, your own solutions. And you're living in this, in this world and you're sitting up there and you're trying to come up with your own solution. Do you understand that when we receive the power of the Holy Spirit, he makes things easy for us? If we would just learn to be patient and wait on him. I know you prayed on it. I know you prayed. I know you pray, but you don't feel like he's moving fast enough. I'm talking to you all. I know you said, I read my word. I pray, I fast, and he still ain't moved. Well, how about maybe he has not moved because that's something that you have to do. What is that something? Be quiet. Stop talking to everybody. Stop running your mouth to everybody. Y'all want to smell victory? Stop talking to everybody and wait in peace. Just trust the Lord. All you do is just lean back. Come on, it's real simple. Just, just as simple as I lean back here. And learn to relax. A lot of y'all is not learning to relax in the Holy Spirit. This is how you're going to learn to accept the victory that is at hand, that is waiting to give, give, be given to you. But you know what? I'm finding that a lot of people are blocking the victory. Y'all stop blocking your victory. Stop blocking your victory. The Lord is just telling you, look here. I am the Lord. That wins every fight. I have not seen him lose not one. Why do you think he's not going to answer your prayers? Why? Is it something that you're not doing? Maybe you need to line up with the Holy Spirit. Because I'm going to tell you this. A lot of times we just not lined up with him. How about you go to him and say, Holy Ghost. What is it I need to be doing in this hour? Am I in your divine will right now? And, and, and what is it you need me to do? Are y'all talking like that? Hmm. Hello? Are you talking like that? Because that's how he needs you to talk to him. He said, come to me and talk to me and I will give you the answer. And that answer will be victorious. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? There are going to be a lot of challenges in your life. A lot of y'all are going, some of y'all facing challenges right now. But understand, if in the morning we sense his freshness and in our hearts, we can gain the strength we need to go through every challenge. That's why we wake up in the morning and we commune with him. As we open up in the morning, we commune with him. And so we say, Lord, this is a new day. Help me to overcome every challenge, every obstacle, every situation that arrive. Help me. And please don't think he won't help you because he will. As I was reading a little further, it says, uh, it says, perhaps many have discovered, as I have, that we are not smart enough to solve the countless problems we continually to face. And reality is, we aren't smart enough. We're not smart enough to try to handle all these problems. It's like having your own business without legal document. I, I, I got to try to sit and figure out every situation. I got to. I got to be the manager. I got to be the employee. I got to be the CEO. I. I got. I got to be the janitor. I, come on, y'all. I, I got to be everything. Well, the Lord's saying you don't need to be everything because I'm everything. 
The Holy Spirit is telling the whole the God, our Jehovah, is telling us, I sent a comforter, I sent somebody, an advocate in this earthly realm to help direct you. And you don't have to look to be everything. Oh, if we pray and seek his face, if we pray and seek his face, he will teach us everything. If we be faithful to him, he'll be faithful to us. And I, matter of fact, how about he's faithful to us even when we're not faithful to him? Ooh. He's faithful when we are not even faithful to him. He's yet still in our corner. He's yet still having mercy and grace. And isn't it something how we like to give up on people, but the Holy Ghost never gives up on us. No, no, this, is the, this is the beauty of it. Folks may leave, but the Holy Ghost stay. That's why I don't understand why we ain't trying to get intimate with him. He stays and other people leave. I don't understand why she got to be your BFF. And she ain't, she's not even speaking life. She's not um, providing for you or he's not providing for you or whatever the case may be. All they're doing is being negative in your ear. Girl, girl, girl if I was you, I would have did this. And, and girl, if I was you, I would have did this. And you know that ain't right. But the Holy Ghost is not doing that. The Holy Ghost is saying this, forgive them. Or the Holy Ghost is opening up your understanding. Do you understand why that occurred? Or what happened? Y'all, I'm trying to tell y'all what the Holy Ghost do. He's so peaceful. I would rather have a voice of peace in my ear gates than somebody talking about, girl, what you, girl, did you hear? I, I would rather have somebody say, have mercy. Love them in spite of. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm trying to tell you. He is always here for us when everybody else leaves. And he makes sure that everything that you need, that I said need, I didn't say won't, I said need. He makes sure you have a roof over your head. He makes sure you have transportation. And some of y'all may say, well, I don't have a car, but guess what? Transportation is Uber, Lyft, cat bus, whatever your transportation out in this uh, in your city, that he makes sure you have transportation. He makes sure you clothe. He makes sure you eating. He makes sure things is taken care of, things that you need. Why is it that we are not trying to be intimate with somebody that provides for us, which is the Holy Spirit? That's victory just within itself. It was victory when he pulled you out of that, out of your mess. Hello. It was victory when he told you not to do that or cut this off or leave that person alone. That was victory. I, I know y'all may not look at it that way, but he was blocking something before something could even occur. That's victory. Next thing, the result of a communion when you commune with the Lord. So the first thing on the list is victory. So he makes sure you have victory and your situations may not be how you want it, but guess what? It's victory. Because if he say it is, then it is so. The next thing, number two on the list is revelation. When you commune with the Holy Spirit, he gives you revelatory word. Much time spent in prayer with God, he will make sure that he will reveal things to you. And your quiet meditation. Once I have prayed and once I have read my scripture and my quiet meditation, I allow the Holy Spirit to speak to my heart to direct me, to guide me, the, the very individual that dwells inside of me, I allow him to speak to me, speak to me concerning the word, because there's a lot of stuff. I hear a lot of individuals and they say, well, I don't like the word because I don't understand the word. So, you know, I, tell them, I said, look here, there are other, there are other, um, 
uh, translations that you can read, the NIV version, the NLT version. You got so many versions out there. The Amplified kind of breaks things down. But understand this, there is not an excuse because the more you commune with them, I, I don't care what anybody tell you because uh, we grew up on KJ version, the, the, the vows and the deeds, and you understand what I'm saying. OK, and, and that's what we grew up on. And the Holy Spirit was always there. He taught he taught me how to pray and, and he taught me how to learn to quiet my spirit and listen. I would sit there for for some some maybe a half an hour and just sit there and, and, and allow him to speak to me. And he may not speak all at once right away. But if I sit there long enough, he starts to minister to my spirit. And then I start to receive revelation. People say they don't read the word because they don't understand the word. Y'all, no, 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 no. That's not an excuse. The Holy Spirit works together with the word. That's why I open up with John. They work together. He came wrapped up in the flesh. He wants you to understand. The Holy Spirit don't want you to be ignorant. Y'all, he does not want you to be ignorant. He wants you to know. It's the enemy that said, the Bible says my people perish in the lack of knowledge. It's the enemy that wants you to have the lack of knowledge. But if you don't put in the effort, then how can he give you revelation? If you don't commune with him, how can he give you that revelation? He cannot. I'm just encouraging you all today to start communing and spending that intimate relationship with him so that you can be empowered in this hour. He dwells within us. So if, if he's inside of us, what make, why wouldn't we talk to him? He comes, he brings, he brings a, a, a insight to that word, logos. He brings insight to us. Stuff that we did not even fathom that we would know, that we would not comprehend. The Holy Ghost said, this is what this means. Matter of fact, I want you to take this scripture and connect it with this scripture. Just as Mary conceived in her physical body and how, how the word of God impregnated her, the Holy Ghost, once you put the word on the inside of you, you become pregnant and the Holy Ghost makes it a point that that baby comes to life. Hello, somebody. He impregnates you with the word and the Holy Ghost brings it to life. So I, I'm encouraging you all to eat, eat, go on a feeding frenzy, but when you're eating, even put some fasting in it and just eat and just eat and then watch that word start to come to life. When you are out among individuals, when the Holy Ghost send you out, do you understand that the Holy Ghost will pull a word out of you and you may have read it a year ago? Two months ago, and you'd be like, man, I didn't even know that. I, I forgot I even read about that. But because you have, because you allow the word to pregnate you, the Holy Spirit brings it to life. And it's not to just bring it to life for yourself, it's for other people. I'm telling y'all, if you commune with him, he's telling you in this hour that I want to bring that baby that you have placed on the inside to life. I want you to conceive in this hour, just like Mary did. He's speaking in your spirits, but he's calling you to listen in this hour. The scripture, when you commune with the Holy Spirit, it causes you to live in the spirit. The Bible is wanting us, the Bible tells us that he wants us to walk in the spirit. If you don't learn how to walk in the spirit, then that becomes a problem. Walking in the spirit is revelation to you. Do y'all realize that? Because now it's something you are stepping into that you never, you never knew. You never realized that you could ever do it. Walking in the spirit He's calling us to walk in the spirit and allow individuals to see how powerful it is. Galatians 5 and 16. It talks about. So I say, you know what? Hold on one second. 
I want to go up to 15. Let's go to 15. Galatians 5. And I'm almost done, you guys. And 15. 14 tells us first, love your neighbors as yourself, okay? Then it says, 15, if you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. So look, listen to what the scripture is saying. Then it goes down and it says, so I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of your flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. So the Lord, so Paul is writing to the Galatians and he's telling them to love your neighbor as you love yourself. This is the problem. A lot of us don't love love ourselves, So it's very difficult for us to love our neighbor. But I'm here to tell you, if you commune with the Holy Spirit, he will teach you how to love yourself. He will teach you how to accept yourself for who you are. And, and, and whatever mama said or whatever daddy said, and whoever, if it was an old husband of yours or old wife or old or whoever, or old significant other, whatever relationship that called itself trying to damage you, the Holy Spirit will pluck out those seeds of discord that was planted in you and will teach you how to love yourself, that you don't entertain the very things that these individuals tried to plant inside of you. My Jesus, it's the Holy Spirit that, that gives you revelation of you discovering who you really are. Because when you really love, when you really fall in love with yourself, you'll realize that, that when you're falling in love with yourself, you're falling in love with who the Lord has created you to be. Some of y'all feel like y'all don't have no purpose. You do have purpose. That's why, that's why he tells when we open up and we said, discover the real truth, the real purpose, the real you, you got to know the real truth about yourself. So many folks have lied to you. So many people have called you stupid, called you dumb. You ain't going to amount to nothing. You, you are, you are, you're a prostitute, you're a hoe, you're a prostitute, you're this, you're that, and, and you're going to be this. And, and they just, you're going to be like your old daddy. You're going to be a drunk. You're going to, come on, y'all. They have told you so much negative stuff. That all that stuff was planted in you, but when you start to get before the Lord and you start to commune with him, he start to give you revelatory concerning yourself that you never even knew. He said, you are a writer. You didn't know you was a writer? Look, I called you to prophesy. You didn't know you, you was going to prophesy to nations? I, I'm sending you to be that evangelist, uh, to go out in the highways, in the byways, and to pull people in. I'm empowering you. And the Lord start to encourage you like he encouraged John. Joshua. But you will never know, y'all, if you don't commune with him. If you don't walk in the spirit, you can never love yourself. And some of us say we love ourselves, but that's a false love. My Jesus. It's a false love, and you don't even really know who you are. You don't fell in love with what the enemy has placed on you. And that ain't even you. Newsflash. The Lord is saying, I'm giving revelation in this hour. And I need you to step into revelatory word concerning yourself. I know we look for the Raymond. I know we look for the revelatory word in the scripture. But can I get to know who I truly am as I'm getting to know who Jesus is. I'm telling you guys, he will show you who you are truly. Some of y'all still trying to figure out who you are. Well, if you don't know who you are by now, that's because you have not, you are really not communing with the Lord. And then some of y'all have a tendency to reject who the Lord is telling you who you are. How many of y'all running from your real identity. Some of y'all is running from your real identity. You're running from revelation. But he's telling you, if you learn to love yourself, you won't bite and devour other people. That means you won't constantly run your mouth and talk about people. You'll just pray for them. You'll just love them. 
You may address a concern, but please let it be a concern. Learning to love and receive who you are is the Holy Ghost that reveals to you the truth about you. Communing with the Holy Spirit and having that intimate relationship with him. He's calling you in this hour to have victory and step into revelatory word concerning you, not just the scripture, but you as well. The Lord is turning things in this hour. It's enough. It's enough that we have lived this life for so long. A lot of individuals have lived this life for so long and you still don't know who you are. Step into the revelatory, he's saying, in this hour. Know who you are. Know that he can transform your mind. Know that he can bring thoughts. Um, if it's not of him, he, he knows how to cast things down that is not of him. He knows how to cast down imaginations that do not line up with him. He knows how to do that if you step into harmony with him. He knows how to give you power. He knows how to give you the anointing that ministers through you to others. He knows how to give you the authority and the influence to grab other individuals that are in need, that is hurting in this hour. We're calling in this hour that you get to know who you are. I'm encouraging you all to get to know who you are through the communion of the Holy Spirit. As you're learning Jesus Christ, as you're learning the Holy Spirit, the third person, as you're learning, guess what? He's going to give you revelation about yourself. Love you all. We getting ready to get up out of here. Let me give a word of prayer before we leave. Those that are yet still confused. It's not that you're confused. You could, you probably, you probably just don't have a, a complete understanding. You don't have to live in confusion because confusion is of the enemy. If you lack understanding, if you lack wisdom, the Lord wants you to come and get an understanding. Pray, pray. He, he wants you to come and pray and get an understanding. Move in him in this hour. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come to the throne of grace again, Lord, we are getting ready to close this word out. But those that are struggling within themselves, those that are having a hard time in themselves and, and having a hard time discovering who you are and, and learning who you are, Lord, I speak, that, speak right now to every soul that you start turning in their heart, turn in their mindset, that they get to know who you are, Holy Ghost. You're already on the inside because you said, if you abide with me, I abide with you. You don't never leave us or, nor forsake us. Lord, others may leave, but you are yet still with us. Lord, allow us to see who you are truly in our life. And as we truly get to know who you are, let us commune in the Holy Spirit so that he can always give us victory and that he always reveal to us, not just the word, but us, who we we are in him in the name of Jesus. Let us not be ignorant in this hour. I speak revelatory. I speak that logos. The word brings life unto them as you impregnate them with the word in the name of Jesus. Allow them to conceive in this hour. Allow them to birth out life through the word, through the power of the Holy Spirit so that others may be able to enjoy the life in them in Christ Jesus. Move by your chica by your spirit let them taste the good of the word the good of the word in the name of Jesus revelation comes and it's the good of the word revealing their identity of revealing the truth revealing their purpose in this hour we thank you for what you are doing oh Lord we speak we speak right now that every thought every imagination every seed that was planted from from their childhood we speak right now that the power of the most high open up their mashata open up their mindset and pluck out every seed
seed that is not producing the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we speak that you set them free in this hour. They will not be in bondage. When you enter in, you have released the shackles. Let them not keep going back to the same old stuff. In the name of Jesus, transform Transform their mind, transform their hearts in the name of Jesus and everything that, that, that sits embedded in their soul. We speak right now that you do the work and pluck it out in the name of Jesus, that their desires and their passions and their hunger and their thirst, hunger after you, thirst after you, desire after you, passionate about you in the mighty name of Jesus. They shall walk in the spirit, mighty hand of the Lord, and about shut a little about shut up, so that they will gratify the desires of their flesh. I speak it right now. I speak that every tactic and every snare, mm, every scheme that the enemy is trying to plot right now against the word that is planting in their spirit, I come up against it right now. Every demonic force uh, that is trying to buffet them, every demon uh, that's trying to activate itself uh, in their mindset, uh, in their household, I come up against it right now. You will have victory. You will have victory. You You will have victory. In the name of Jesus, the Lord, empower you, influence you, that you be the influencer in this hour, that others may be drawn. Bakarabashata to the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. The Lord is speaking to you right now that he is, he is the Rebashat, the restore. He's going to restore. The Lord is going to restore the things that the canker worm ate up in the name of Jesus through your communion. The Lord is calling you in this hour, my God, to get in the face and stretch out before him. Lord, you do the work as they move. You spoke in your word that if we obey and we do what you tell us to do, that you will reward us openly. So I speak right now that we will love in spite of. Teach us, Master, through the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, let us commune with you at all times. Let us have the questions for you and you shall answer let us not be afraid in the name of Jesus to move in your direction to move in your divine will in this hour and in this season oh the power of the Holy Ghost will produce love in your spirit he will produce goodness he will produce joy he will produce your peace your faithfulness your gentleness your self-control in this hour. Do it, Lord, for humility in this hour. Get before, put it in their spirit, drive them to their knees in this hour. We give you the praise, we give you the honor because it belongs to you. I speak experience. I speak experience in this hour that you will experience the power of the Holy Ghost, the communion with the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, the power of Jehovah, let them prevail in this hour. The power of Jehovah through the power of the Holy Ghost, let him prevail in this hour. And we thank you, Lord, for what you are doing and what you have already done and what you are about to do. In Jesus' name, somebody better give the Lord a hand praise. Holla on your side if you know that you are in victory and you are moving in victory. Holla for Jesus. I'm telling you, the Lord is saying that we shall have victory. Mm. We will have victory in this hour, and revelation will be revealed in this hour. Some of y'all might have to holler for your children. Some of y'all may have to holler for family members. I'm telling you in this hour, you commune with the Holy Ghost. This series is necessary. If you commune with him, my God, you're going to see victory on your end. Y'all, we got five more to introduce to you.
far more results regarding the communion. Almighty God, I feel full. I feel full. Oh, by the hand of Jehovah, we have victory. I don't know why people was afraid, but I'm telling y'all, this series is necessary. We are going to drop the other five results for just communing with the Holy Spirit. If we have time, we may uh, get to all five next week. If we don't, we're going to do two at a time. God bless you all. I love you. Y'all, y'all better go. Like, this is why I'm trying to... Uh, I'm trying to charge y'all in this hour. I feel a charge in the spirit. The Lord is charging us in this spirit. Y'all better, y'all better do what the Lord is telling y'all to do in this hour because I'm telling y'all there's some lives at stake in this hour and he's looking to give you answers, but he's looking to even derail the enemy before, before the enemy come in your camp and wreck shot. But he wants you to commune with him so that he can show you the hand of the enemy in this hour. You better hear what the Lord is saying. He said, I'm giving you power. I'm giving you power. But you've got to move in it. You've got to know the divine person in this hour. Because he's the only one that is going to make it possible for victory and revelation to come forth in your life. Know who you are. God bless you all. I love y'all. I I'm getting offline because I'm excited. And y'all, y'all go ahead and y'all keep praying because I'm excited for Jesus. God bless you. Love y'all. Hug on somebody and tell them you love them. And if you don't have nobody next to you, y'all know what we do. Hug yourself. We appreciate everybody that is connected to us globally. We love you all. Keep staying connected. We are one body, one communion. And one community. We are communing in the Lord. God bless you. Love you. Smooches. Bye-bye.